So the Bible says that God at the point of the day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. God at the point of that day, I'm going to stand for my sins, you're going to stand for your sins. We're all individually going to be judged by God according to His Word. That God is not willing that any should perish. So that's God's will. Now you, you have a will. You're an individual, you have your own will. She has a will, she wants to say what she wants to say. You all have a will to choose right and wrong. Everybody has a will. And God, otherwise we'd be robots, okay? But God gave us a will. Now God's will is this. God is willing that you be reconciled. The Bible says this. God says, come, let us reason together. God is trying to reason with you. God is trying to be reasonable. Come, let us reason together. Though our sins be as scarlet, yet they shall be made white as snow. God wants you to be made pure and righteous. God is willing to give you the free gift of eternal life. That you can live forever with Him. That you can have a relationship with your God. With God in heaven. And that you can have peace. The Bible says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it comes down to those two religions. The do religion, which is every religion in the world outside of Christianity. It says you have to do something. There's nothing that you can do outside of trusting in Christ. It's a done religion. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And the Bible says, from a child, and that's why we teach them, from a child that's known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You want to be wise unto salvation? Read the Bible. You want to be want wise unto salvation know what God expects? Read the Bible. God is sovereign. Whether you want to believe it or not, we have a sovereign God. Because you don't want to accept Him or, re or receive Him, it doesn't matter. God's not... God's not here. He doesn't have to beg anybody. He doesn't have to beg anybody. He is God. He's supreme. And we're His creation. And He can make you a new creature if you'll come to Him. Like He did to me in 1995. I was lost, dead in my sins. And the Bible says we're dead in trespasses and sins. And God is able to quicken you. Your inner man. We are a trichotomy. A body, a soul, and a spirit. You are two-thirds spiritual and you'll never fill the f satisfaction of the flesh will never be satisfied for that inner man no matter how much drugs you take how much drinking how much sex how much anything that you could think of that's fun I want to tell you that will never satisfy it doesn't satisfy the Bible says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are come new so in 1995 I was assistant director I was acting in movies taught theater acting class but I didn't have any peace I, I, I didn't have peace inside. And, and there, was, there was no happiness. There's no joy. There was, and, and I started reading the Bible. I started opening up and reading it. And I realized, man, I am not saved. God revealed to me my sinfulness. <laughs> and I realized I needed to have my sins made right with God. And he refused the presidential pardon. That means he was going to die. And the, and the guy that I was talking to, the student, he said, that's insane. I said, yeah, he, he was received it. It went to the, the Supreme Court of the United States of America. And the judge said, if he's not willing to receive that pardon, then he has no right to, to, to get it. So he went there and he hung and died. And that student said, that's insane. I said, you know what? God offers you forgiveness of your sins. God offers you a, a, a pardon. We're pardoned through Christ. A pardon. Uh, found not guilty. And if you don't accept that, Did that really you're going to be insane. That really happens. Okay. There's the analogy. If you don't receive the gift of the everlasting life, you're insane. Never mind Paxil's wager. Okay? The fact... Yeah, the fact... I'm familiar with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure you are. I think if you were to, to go ahead and believe in God and live like that, you risk losing life. The enjoyment of life, true enjoyment. Following religious I, I, I've, I enjoy life. I enjoy life to the fullest I because I because I have life. The real life is Christ. Christ is the life, the light of this world. Not to everybody. Yeah. Not to most people. No, because men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil, the Bible says. And everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds may be reproved. But he that doeth truth, the Bible says, cometh to the light. That is, these may be manifest that they are wrought in God. Get on your knees and confess the Lord Jesus Christ.
You need the Lord Jesus Christ. Forget about all the stu extra stuff that was said today. The bottom line is, you need Christ. Without Christ, you have no hope. You have no hope. You're without God, without hope in this world. There is no peace outside of Christ. Any other questions? Honest, sincere question. Not some smart comment, smart Alec. Just, I mean, an honest question. You know what? Gays are going to hell. I know people that were homosexuals that have repented and turned to Jesus Christ, and they are saved now, and 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 they will go to heaven. They will be. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What's that? What if you're someone to be gay? He needs to repent and turn to Jesus Christ and be so. saved. I don't think so. I'm telling you, you ask a you ask a question, and that's the answer. The Bible says, here's what God said. Here's what the Bible says. God commandeth all men, all men, all men, everywhere to repent. All men everywhere to repent. Because He's appointed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. We, we're, all, we're all born wrong. We're all born wrong. We're all born wrong. We're all born wrong. Because sin has entered into this world. We're, been, we're a sinner by birth, but we're also a sinner by choice. Even if you think you were born, and I don't care if you think you were born gay. Okay? Fine, you think you were born gay? Jesus said you must be born again. You've got to be changed from the inside. He says, he said homosexuals, effeminate, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But he says such were some of you. But you're sanctified, you're justified. You can be cleansed.